after all these test series, revision, notes, means 2024 is now just around the corner. You have just hardly one week to write the actual mains paper. Let's discuss what exactly should be your ethics exam day strategy. For somebody who is writing 2024 mains, these are gospels you should not miss. On the other side, if you are preparing for 2025 mains, I have something very interesting for you. Stay with the video, we will discuss this in the end. Let's start with what exactly, what are the most important things you should keep in mind on ethics exam day. First thing, again, this is not an essay paper. This is not the first mains paper you are going to write. On 20th, you will be writing three hour essay paper. Then on 21st, you will be showing up for GS1, GS2. Then third day, you will be having GS3. And then where the ethics paper is coming. It is obvious you will be physically exhausted. You will be tired. Your hands will be paining. Some people have seen blood coming out of the fingers. Have seen mental fatigue. These all are going to happen. And keep yourself prepared. If you want to take an extra dose of say, energy drink habit, if you want to do some hand exercises like that, soft bowls and all, do that. Be prepared for this exhaustion and still you have to deliver. There is no compromise on delivering on the paper. And this should not stop you from delivering your best. This is the first thing I want to speak about. This exhaustion, this tiredness is something unavoidable for every candidate. And you have to perform within this. Now, once you overcome this, all these external difficulties, what exactly you should focus on on the paper? Start smart. I have seen students having a lot of debates on should I write section A first or should I write case studies first? Now, what is the exact answer for this? At the end of the day, your marks will be given on your script. What you have put on the paper will be evaluated. Now, who is going to judge you for what you are going to write first? What you have written matters rather than what you have written first. Whatever strategy you have been following in the test series or in whatever you have been writing so far. If you are somebody who is writing section A first, going along with the questions given in the question paper, do that. That is the best strategy for you. If you are somebody who have been writing case studies first, do the reading part first, complete the case studies, then move to the section A, then that is the optimum strategy for you. Don't make any changes. What is your approach? We stick to that. More importantly, what you should focus on is whatever section you start, complete that section within the regulated or given time. Say section A, complete it in 90 minutes. Section B you are starting, complete six case studies in 90 minutes. Have a check on time on every 15, 30 minutes. You are writing case studies every 15 minutes, complete one case studies. There is overshoot of time here and there, 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there. Then this is going to hamper your quality of answers. So don't let that thing happen. Every 15 minutes, you should complete one case studies. On the other hand, if you are writing section A, for every 30 minutes, you should at least answer four questions. And the last half hour, you can move to write five questions. So writing speed should be your more concern rather than which section you are going to write first. On that note, again, time is tight. Mind the paper's length. In ethics paper especially, we have seen there has been changes in the length of paper. We have seen years with very lengthy case studies with four, five questions being asked in every case study. Even reading those 2000 words itself is a challenge. So sometimes paper comes like this. On the other hand, we have shorter case studies and only one question being asked. What is your response? Now, it is not, there is challenges here also. Writing four pages on what exactly is your response. It's it, indeed a challenge in itself. But the problem is, if you are not aware of the length of a paper, there is high chance you will 
not complete the paper and this is a huge crime so when you get the paper before starting the paper have a look at the length of the case studies number of questions being asked in case studies if it is lengthy and with four or five questions then keep in mind that you have to push back time you have to stretch your writing speed completing the paper is huge huge challenge in this paper there is no compromise in this and same thing section b section a what you can do for managing the time i have discussed this with many of you there will be 13 questions in section a identify at least three questions four questions where you don't have solid content where you are not writing something which you have prepared you are just make filling the pages and for ethics paper somebody who have you seen the last year and pyqs there is no question that is coming out of it a complete blue moon everything is asked being asked from the syllabus from terms you have already been aware of it is not that difficult to fill two pages but if it is not according again to the demand of the question what exactly is being asked you're not going to get marks for this so if you don't know a certain answers don't push yourself to fill the pages limit the answers in say 1.5 pages or slightly less than that so that if there is a time situation not missing out on very important questions or those questions which you have good content time should be your judge time should be your too much under your control in ethics paper there is no compromise for this i don't care where you start the paper but you cannot miss out compromise on time management i've seen students who have miss on the time management in the initial question let's take too much of 15 minutes on first question keep this thing in your mind you're going to start the paper maybe in a slightly not in perfect handwriting. You are forcefully starting the paper in a high speed manner. Train yourself to not miss the time management in the initial two, three questions. So, this is the third important thing I need to convey. The fourth thing is stay focused. Again, answer writing and the copy evaluation or the analysis that is. The rule, fundamental rule is quite straightforward. Every question, there will be some objective criteria on which the evaluation will be made. So you need to understand what exactly is the demand of the question and you have to answer this. If you are violating from this, I have seen students in the hurry of this examination, they have seen emotional intelligence and they have written different components of emotional intelligence given by Daniel Goldman and whatnot. But the question is how to train civil servants on emotional intelligence. Why you are writing one page of Daniel Goldman theory? Doesn't carry any weightage. So maybe you will spend a little bit more time on reading the question. Spend that. But whatever you are putting down in the paper, that should be what exactly is asked. If I am an evaluator, I have objective criteria where I can give you marks. If consequences is asked, write the whole answer about consequences. With some intro conclusion and some diagrams and all, you can experiment. But most of your answer should be only consequences. If causes is being asked, write most of your answer should be causes. Should not be balanced. If critically analyze, evaluate, examine, your answer should show both the parts of it. If analyze Buddha's teachings it is not asking what is buddha's teachings you should write about positives and some negatives of buddha's teachings so demand of the question get this into your mind and this should never be violated whether you know the content you don't know the content you are in a hurry whatever is the situation even if you are writing a half page answer i should be forced to give you some marks for this that should be your focus on demand of the question and lastly i have seen how i explain what should be a perfect way of say presenting the points there should be some at least you should split the answer into two three dimensions and there should be some arguments followed by a substantiating example or fact or something like that now whatever you have trained yourself your notes your 
test series, your classes, all this I have given you a number of information. Now, some students are a little bit confused that I am not getting too much of examples. Sometimes questions are very specific. How can I remember examples for this? How can I am not getting right arguments? I am getting few examples, but arguments are not coming to me. So, ideal way is an argument followed by an substantiating example. But in answer writing, try to, if you are making a heading and points below that, at least for the first three, four, five points, this should be your approach. That is, there should be something, an argument followed by substantiation. But beyond that, I literally don't care. If you only remember arguments, write only arguments. If you only remember examples, write only examples. If you can connect with something you have read in optional, connect with that. Don't bring the scholar's name, but connect the concept. If you can connect something with GS3, GS2, GS1, anything you have read anywhere, connect with us and give that example. Because it, at this point of time, I want to see more point in your paper. Whatever is your level of preparation, your level of writing, increase number of points. If you are normally writing six points, force yourself to write eight points. Think a little bit more. Shorten the points a little bit more so that you can accommodate two more points into this. Understand? In line with the demand of the question. Quantity does matter at this point of time. I don't want any excuse. Whether you can only write arguments, only write arguments. Only write examples, only write examples. I'm not going to judge you for any of this, but write in the paper and come back. These are five things you can never compromise when going to ethics paper, mains 2024. Now, for somebody who has been preparing or who is preparing for, say, mains 2025, what should I do? I already missed 2024 for some XYZ reasons. Should I wait for the question paper, somebody to upload and then write these all test papers at home? This is a very, you can say, romantic idea, but it is never ever going to happen. You're not going to sit yourself and write all these papers. And within two, three days, some discussion videos, some group discussion, all this come up, you will get exposed to these questions, these concepts, what is being asked, then what's the point of writing it on another day? So for you, I have a very interesting idea. We have this replay program on the same day of the mains examination on September 20th. Come to the Kalamaya Center and attend this replay program. That means on the morning slot, you have this essay paper. On the same day itself, on 2 to 5 slot, you can write the essay paper at Kalamaya Center. The same question, everything the same. Same goes for GS1, GS2, and GS3, and GS4. This will be followed by discussion, face-to-face -face evaluation of your copies, as well as the complete evaluation and all this. Model answers, everything will be provided to you. But the more most important thing is show up on the day of examination. Show up if you have the willpower to force yourself to write six hours for continuously two days. You have that capacity, I am guaranteeing you, you are way ahead of the crowd preparing for mains 2025. If you are preparing for mains 2025, come for come and write replay program. That is my very strict order for you. On that note, we will wind up today's session. Never forget the four, five gospels when you are entering the ethics exam day. That's all for now. All the best and do very well in the examination.